Hey guitar players, it's Sean and welcome to today's Guitar Beginner's Guide video. Uh, this video is kind of a follow-up to one I did a little while back which was called Five Chords You Must Know. And in that video I covered uh, the major chords which were A, C, D, E, and G, but notably I left B and F out of the picture. And why did I do that? Because I wanted to dedicate a video just to those chords because they do present certain challenges for the beginner guitar player. Now the B and the F chord we'll be covering today are slightly simplified versions. Sometimes people refer to them as like beginner versions of the chords themselves. Uh, however, they do have their things about them. So the way that today's video is going to work is first I'm going to show you how to play each chord, uh, just in case you don't know them already, and uh, then I'm going to backtrack and we'll look at some of the challenges that each chord presents and some solutions to make them sound great. All right, so here's our F chord. Now the F chord does something a bit different than all the others so far, and what that is is it's pushing down two strings at the same time. So my first finger is pushing down at the first fret, uh, the first and the second string together like this, and we call that a bar, B-A-R-R-E. And on the chord grid, you'll see here a little swoopy line, and that's indicating to do a bar like that. So I leave that there, and now I take my second finger, I place it on the third string at the second fret, and my third finger goes on the fourth string at the third fret. Now when I strum the F chord, I don't play the fifth or the sixth string, just those four, and that's what it sounds like. All right, up next is our B. So what's going on with the B chord is I am putting my first finger on the first string at the second fret. I'm putting my second finger on the fourth string at the fourth fret. My third finger goes on the third string at the fourth fret. And my pinky goes on the second string at the fourth fret. And I don't play my sixth or my fifth string. All right, so you got all that, no problem at all. The F is nice and clear and the B is, is a piece of cake. See you next time. <laughs> Probably not, right? Let's break these down and uh, hopefully I can help you on your road to making these nice and clear and easy to play. All right, so as far as F is concerned, the main challenge or the most obvious one is this barring business right here, where is, if you haven't had to do this kind of thing before, it can be really difficult to make this sound clear and crisp and all that kind of stuff. And then also when, like later, when I place these other fingers on, what tends to happen is the first finger will want to lift a little bit, and then I'll get angry and I'll try to force that down, and these fingers will go this way, and it's all downhill from there. So let's talk solutions here. Let's make this work. What I would do first, if I were you, if you've never had to do this kind of barring business before, in other words, pushing down more than one string at the same time with a single finger, I would focus on that for starters. Now, we're here at the first fret, and one thing that's different about this fret is it's, uh, compared to the others is that it's very close to the nut of the guitar. Now, the closer you get to the nut with your finger, the harder it is to push down those strings. And you can kind of even try that on your own. As you get close to there, yeah, it's like very, very high tension. So you want to place your finger as close to the fret wire as you can. So like kind of like that kind of thing. Now myself, when I play F, I angle my finger slightly, like this. This may or may not work for you. It works great for me. Um, you may prefer to have your finger a little bit more straight, but that's something you can kind of play around with. And also, I recommend doing something like this. Moving your bar around a little bit, just to kind of get used to the sensation or the feeling of barring on the guitar. It's a reality that's going, and this is going to be used more and more as you get into more complicated chords. Um, so this is a great great way to get used to it. Also, um, when you do move it around, don't keep the pressure down and then just try to uh, force it. You'll kind of hurt your finger, especially if you don't have calluses on your fingers yet. Um, but just kind of lift it and move it. And also I would recommend maybe trying different combinations of strings. You could do like I don't know, bar in your second and your third string, right? Your third and your fourth string, you know, and so on and so on. And that will help you get used to this sensation. 
Now when you place the rest of the cord on, what happens, not all the time, but, but quite often, is you know, your bar is sounding really good, you put these guys on, and then what happens is this first finger kind of lifts a little bit because you're kind of stretching the hand out. And uh, again, this is, this is quite common, and then you end up with something that sounds, you know, sounds good till you get to the bar part, and you're like, oh man, I put in all this work on this. So here's, here's what I recommend you do, is first of all, try to relax a little bit. Don't overdo it with pushing and struggling and trying to make this thing sound good. It'll get there, don't worry about it. But place your fingers where they're supposed to go and then just kind of relax. And actually right now, these are all, I'm not even pushing down, I just have my fingers in place. This is a great thing to try. So just putting them there, keeping them in place, and if you find that it's all kind of mushing up on you, you know, depending on the flexibility of your hand and so on, you can just take your other hand and just kind of maybe gently guide those guys back, okay? And then try applying some pressure, okay? Like as if you were, you were going to play it kind of thing. And then just kind of release and just have it, have them sitting there and just getting used to this sensation of having these guys spread out. Also, um, when at first a lot of people do this chord, they do the bar, then they add this finger, and then they add this one, right? Um, try going in the opposite order, just for fun. Go like third finger on the fourth string there, and then your second finger, and then adding the bar. That might give you a totally different perspective on the whole thing, okay? But just relax, you'll get it eventually, don't worry. Now, if you've been enjoying this content, I would really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe and uh, leave some comments and thank you in advance. So, let's talk about the B chord. All right, so let's talk about some of the challenges with the B chord, some of the weirdness. Um, the, the thing about this chord is that there's a bit of a stretch going on here. And what I mean by that is my first finger is way over here at the second fret on the first string, and then these three are at the, they're on the fourth fret uh, on different strings, and you've got a gap, you've got a fret in between them, and what often happens is this finger will want to kind of join the others, and I end up with something that sounds like that, which is very interesting, but it wasn't what we were going for, going for more of that kind of thing, and, and it's, you know, it's like I said, it's because of this, this gap, this stretching. And I would say that the most difficult part of it is the relationship between the first and the second finger. So I just kind of took the others away there. So what's going on, of course, is first finger is on the first string at the second fret, and my second finger is on the fourth string at the fourth fret. And this can be a bit of a do at first. Um, so just try practicing, like, isolating those two fingers. And maybe take this approach too, like we did with the last chord. Place this guy first, and then try placing your second finger, and the opposite. Another thing that I find works really, really well is just a little bit of imagery here. Just imagine that these three fingers, your, your second, third, and fourth finger, that you accidentally crazy glued them together, uh, which I've done before. I don't recommend it. Um, it's no fun. And just, but just imagine that they're stuck together and they're like a unit, okay? And they're just forming this shape. And if you did the other video, if you already know an A chord, by the way, that looks just like an A chord, just with, instead of these three fingers, it's with these three. So that might help out a little bit. And just imagine, like I said, that they're a unit and they're not kind of spread out like this, but they're, they're, they're together, okay? So instead of one at a time, three at a time, and then placing your finger. And again, just relax. You can do the chord, and again, with no pressure on, and then push, putting it on and working at it like that. Okay, so that's a lot of talk about what's going on with placing the fingers, but there's one really, really key thing that we haven't talked about yet, and that is what's going on with the thumb, because what you're doing with your thumb can make or break your chords. All right, so here's an overhead view um, of what I'm doing with my thumb. Now, when I play, I've got my thumb kind of in the middle-ish area here of, of the chord. And what that does is that allows my hand, my fingers to nicely spread out. Um, if you're doing things like this, 
and again, we're all different, right? But, but if you're doing this, generally speaking, you're kind of cramping up and misshaping your, your hand. Um, and also, if you're really gripping the neck hard, like, like so, and you've got like no space here, you're, you're kind of doing what we call cupping the neck, um, that will restrict the movement of your fingers as well, make it, making it you know, more difficult than it needs to be. So I recommend something that looks sort of like that, and we're all different, you know, all our hands are different shapes and sizes, but something approximately like that. And that goes for the B chord as well, right? So if you're like this, it makes it difficult, you know, your fingers kind of drape over, or if it's too far this way, then the, your hand, the fingers want to kind of go like this way. Okay, so sort of like, like that. Now one last point I want to make is sometimes it's not you, it's the guitar. Um, so if your guitar hasn't been what's known as set up before, or it hasn't been for a long time, um, I would suggest you have that done, because sometimes our strings, we don't notice, but they get higher on, on us. That's called the action, so the action gets a bit higher. Um, maybe the neck is kind of warped, you know, due to changes in weather or humidity, um, making it more difficult to play than is necessary. Or you've got like thousand-year-old strings on it that are kind of gross and rusty and cut your fingers every time you go to play the guitar. So I would recommend always having the guitar set up and uh, in good working order. All right, so there you go. I hope that helps. We'll see you next time. I'm Sean.